Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you tonight that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want you to get your Bibles out with me and go to, with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1. I'm still talking about the blessing. It, it, it may take me all year long because the Bible is a book of blessing. Everything God is about is to bless. And uh, what I want to do tonight is I want to go into the blessing that God spoke to Adam, five specific blessings. He also spoke them to Noah. And I'm going to show you over the next several weeks these five things running the gamut all through the Word of God. In fact, you will see that these five things are the new covenant that the second Adam, Jesus, came to restore us into these five big powerful blessings and that you and I need to walk in them. We need to claim them. Right. Now, I, I, I know, you know, I'm not interested in numbers. I, I, it, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're not trying to fill a seat here. We're not trying to see how many people we can get. Our object is, is to get this stuff. Right. Right. How many you with me? Say Amen. That, that's our object is to be able to get it and to put it into our lives. And so I'm going to do my best to show you all five of these running through the Word of God. And I believe it's going to be possible in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. What I'm fixing to show you tonight, I, I believe I got by revelation from God. Yes. And I, I, didn't, I didn't get it from somebody else, but I got it straight from the Holy Spirit. And, and the longer I studied it, the longer I had to keep studying it, the longer I had to study it after that. I'm praying for a little bit of sleep now in the name of Jesus. How many of the Lord say amen? amen? All right, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Hallelujah. How many of you understand that Genesis really is the crucible of the whole Bible? Yes. The book of Genesis contains literally more years of history than any book of the Bible. And every one of the patriarchs of Hebrews chapter 11, almost every one, are out of the book of Genesis. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, uh, uh, Noah. My God, it's incredible. And so Genesis, beginnings, it means beginnings. And this is our beginning. This is how God wanted our beginning to do. And let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And I want you to see... That when God, verse 7 says, so God created man in his own image. We're not monkeys. We're not, uh, there wasn't some explosion in the atmosphere and man was created out of an explosion. How many glad for that? Say amen. amen. If that was true, you could completely furnish your house by just taking firecrackers and exploding them and then you got a new bedroom suit. I mean, that would be pretty incredible, I mean. In fact, it sure would be a lot cheaper on me. Glory to God. <laughs> God's good, amen. Hallelujah. And my wife says, oh, baby, we need to buy that. I said, go get a firecracker. Hallelujah to God. We're going we're gonna to explode this right into our home in the name of Jesus. She wishes. Hallelujah to God. And uh, notice what it says. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. Created he them. And God blessed them. Say that with me. And God blessed them. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Come on, say it like you mean it. I, I am blessed. blessed. If you say it over yourself all your life, I'm going to tell you, you'll end up at the end of your life really blessed. I am blessed. Bless them. God said unto them, number one, be fruitful. Everybody say, be fruitful. Be fruitful. This is the blessing. Here's what God, blessing has to be spoken. Remember I told you, a blessing is declared. It's spoken over you. Yeah. God says to Adam and Eve, be fruitful. That's the declaration. And multiply, that, number two, multiply. Number three, replenish. Number four, subdue. Number five, have dominion. I wrote them all up here in the scripture. God blessed them, said be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. All five of these. How many know that you want to live in all five of these in the name of Jesus? How many believe that Jesus is the second Adam and came to restore everything that we lost through sin? Well, y'all agree with that. Say amen. amen. So if he came to restore everything, he came to restore us back to a blessed position. Y'all agree with me? A blessed position. Hallelujah. Look in Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. We're going to see that God did it again for Noah 
when he came out of the ark. Hallelujah. Noah, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you will be on all the beasts of the field, da, 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 which is subdue and have dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Amen. Are y'all with me? Now let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 4. Psalms, say, I am blessed. This is how blessed I want to be. How blessed do I want to be that I can live in all five of these? This is your aim. This is your goal. This is what Jesus Christ came to give to you. I'm going to prove it in the Word of God that all of the miracles that Jesus performed were in the miracles of these five, were in the aspect of these five things. Woo! Have you hear me? All the prophets operated in these. Elijah operated in all five of these. Elisha operated in all five of these. Come on. How do you think Jesus turned water into wine? He replenished. <laughs> Have you with me? Glory to God. Glory to God. How do you think that Elisha told the Shunammite woman she couldn't have a baby? Yeah, you're going to have a baby. Be fruitful. Uh, multiply. All through the Word of God, these five things come into connection. All right. So let's go to Psalms chapter 8. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 8. Hello, buddy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Psalms chapter 8, verse 4 through 6. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let me get this scripture to you. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. If you have a King James, it says a little lower than the angels. Uh, but if you have another translation, it'll say a little lower than God. Made him a little lower than God. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion. Dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. How many things? All things. I put all things under your feet. Matthew chapter 7. Let's look at this a little bit. Let's look at Let's start off at the top of the list. Everybody say, be fruitful. be fruitful. Let's start at the top of this. I use this, Marcus and Brianna. They're probably watching me on the internet uh, uh, up north. They're at a military base. And Brianna, uh, she had a certain amount of miscarriages. She couldn't have a baby. And uh, I told her, I said, Brianna, I'm going to be praying for you, for you to have a baby. And Brianna said, Pastor Randy, don't you pray for me. I cannot have a baby. The doctor said I can't have a baby. I've tried to have babies, and I can't have a baby, and I don't want you praying over me. And she kind of distanced herself from me and because that, uh, she didn't think she was ever going to have a baby. And I just walked up to her, and I said, you are going to have a baby in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Well, she had a baby number one, and we dedicated baby number one. And then she got pregnant again and had baby number two. Then they moved away. She got pregnant again and had baby number three, and I dedicated it over the phone. Then she got pregnant again and had baby number four, and I dedicated it over the phone. I think there's five now. Hallelujah. And I've dedicated most of them on the phone. Glory to God. Amen? Because God said that we can be fruitful. How many believe it? Say amen. God said we can be fruitful. If we believe the Scriptures, we can use them. The Word of God is the tools that we use to manage our life. Come on, don't you let medication, thank God for medication, but that's not going to manage your life. God's Word's going to manage your life. How do you know? It's a lamp to my feet, it's a light to my path. That's management, baby. Start getting into your mind right now. The Word of God's going to manage my life. What Jesus paid for on the cross is going to control my life and manage my life. I have the mind of Christ. Woo! I am more than a conqueror, so I can manage this. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Listen to me. I can save money. If I made $5 a week, I can save money. Quit saying I can't. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can take 50 cents. I can tithe it. 
I owe $10 in bills. If I make $5 a week, I can sow 50 cents. I can save 50 cents because God's going to help me to do it in the name of Jesus. I take control of my money. My bills have had control, but I'm going to take back the control and my money's going to be fruitful and multiply. Come on. As long as, when you stop declaring the blessing over your money, I'm oh, just going everywhere. It's just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, 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 I can't. You've got to take dominion over that money because it's just a tool. Yeah. But it'll work you instead of you working it. And how many you know I'm not lying to you? Yeah. How many y'all love the Lord? Say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Are y'all with me out there? Hallelujah to God. So let's look here at Matthew chapter 7. We're going to start at the first one, be fruitful. We're going to run a little bit of the gamut of the Word of God in here, and we're going to help ourselves out because the, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation uses the word fruit. If it did not constantly use that word fruit, then we would know that we can't be fruitful, but we can be fruitful, which is the Greek word K-R-A-P-O-S. K-R-A-P-O-S. It means results. How many know that all fruit is, is results? When you go out there and get an apple off that tree, you're getting the results of digging that hole in the ground, putting that apple tree in there, working it, watering it, fertilizing it. All fruit is, is results. A manifestation, glory to God. How many of y'all at Matthew chapter 7? Let's look here at verse number 16. Matthew 7, verse number 16. You shall know them by their fruit. How many of you know that you're never to follow the gifts? The gifts are to follow you. Amen. Gifts are signs that point to Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. You are not to follow the signs. You are to follow the Lord. And then the signs will follow you. <laughs> Woo, my God, I know y'all ready to shout, but you're containing yourself. I know, I know, I know. You shall know them, not by, their, not by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will know them by their fruit. What is that? The results, the carpos, the results, what they bring forth in their life. That's why it says to be fruitful. Everybody shout, I'm going to be fruitful. Come on, are you with me? I'm going to start taking, this is, your, this is your road to dominion. If you want to make it from here to there, if you want to make it from here to dominion, Dominion means I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. Dominion means that if the enemy comes against me one way, he's going to flee from me seven ways. Yeah. Dominion means I will live without sickness. I will live without disease. Yeah. I will live without trouble. I will live without lack. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will tread on snakes and scorpions yeah. over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. And the only way to get, from, get to here is to start off being fruitful. Yeah. Start producing results where you are at right now. If you know this much, start producing with it. Huh? Because there are three things that stop all of this. I wrote one of them up, all three of them up here. The first one is ignorance. God does not bless stupidity. Stupid is. The Bible even says, let the ignorant be ignorant still. Ignorance, if I don't know, come on, if I don't know, I can hear it, but if I don't do it, I will remain in ignorance. Ignorance is not bliss. What you don't know will hurt you. Come on. What you don't know will hurt you. Ignorance, everybody say ignorance. Ignorance. Glory to God, glory to God. I'm going to learn, I'm going to know the Lord, I'm going to learn the Word of God. I'm going to know the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. When you go home some night, you need to pull all them kids in there and say, we're going to sit down and we're going to learn the Word of God. They're going to go, ah. Get the belt out and beat their butt off. <laughs> Take that seat of ignorance off of them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> kind of. Ignorance. Come on. Have you with me? Say Amen. You will be blessed by the problem that you solve. The bigger the problem that you solve, the more you're going to get blessed. 
You are paid according to the problem that you solve. How many with me? It's just a law. It works that way. The bigger the problem is that you solve, the more they're going to pay you. That's why doctors make big bucks. How many with me? Say amen. amen. Glory to God. Second, unbelief. Unbelief. I just don't believe that. I just don't believe that. Quit picking and choosing what you're going to believe and not going to believe. God has already picked out what you're supposed to believe. God is smarter than we are. God is wisdom. Jesus is made to me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Call wisdom your sister. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Above all thy getting, get wisdom. Come on, I'm working it. I feel it all over myself. Hallelujah. Call wisdom your sister. Call understanding your kinswoman or your cousin. Amen. I do not want to live in unbelief. I do not want to live in ignorance. I can't pick and choose what I'm going to believe. God already picked out what I'm to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved. I can't be a Muslim and be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I can't believe in Hindu Harry and get saved. I got to believe on the Lord. Amen. Ooh, I love that boy up there. Hallelujah to God. I'm y'all with me. Ignorance, unbelief. Come on. Come on. It's not believing in a man. It's not believing in a pope. It's not believing in a preacher. It's believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody going to help me out? I can't pick and choose. Well, I just don't believe in those gifts. I just don't believe in those fruits. I just don't believe in healing. I'm picking and choosing. And then when the devil sees me pick wrong, that's where he's going to attack me. When I pick and choose what I am and I'm not going to believe or I let somebody pick it for me. There's nothing more dangerous than somebody else picking out what you choose to believe. Well, let me pick it out for you. Come on, you. Come on, let me pick it out. God doesn't do that anymore, so don't believe that. Don't let anybody pick, uh, pick and choose for you because they might make you choose not to believe something. God still wants you to believe. Glory be to God and the Lamb forevermore. It's not mom and dad's job to form you into the image of what they want you to be. God cannot bless a child that the mom and dad are trying to make that child out to be what they want them to be. They've got to form them into Jesus Christ. Our job is to make everybody disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I make them like Jesus, they're going to have the victory in every area of life. Huh? Everybody say, I'm not going to pick and choose. I'm going to believe God. God. Number three is disobedience, which is sin. Disobedience, what is not of faith, is sin. They that know to do good and do it not, it is sin. Disobedience is just as big a sin to a Christian as it is to a sinner. I say it like this. Instant obedience brings instant blessings. Delayed obedience brings a delay in the blessing. And disobedience doesn't bring a blessing at all. Are you all with me out there? I don't want to live in disobedience. Come on. And you've learned from me already that God's going to start you out doing some of the most stupid stuff. I know Randy Heiss is watching me right now. He cut a rug Sunday morning. You know, Randy, they're all out here clapping, shouting. Tom's up on the table. Glory to God. He's with you on it. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. (laughs) I mean, love Jesus. Say amen. I know he kind of shocked him. He's just down there praying next thing. Whoa, here we go. Hallelujah to God. It was wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I think it startled him, glory to God. And I, 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 I just started crying. How I couldn't help myself. You know what I mean? I mean, just, you know what you need to do? If, you're, if your yard is in a drought, just come over there. Just call me over to your house. Let me get outside and read the Bible out there, and it, you'll, your grass will turn green because I'll be out there crying on it. How many love Jesus? Say amen. Hallelujah. So disobedience. This is what's going to cause me not to be fruitful. And even in the Bible, when a woman couldn't have a baby, she turned around and she had a baby. She was barren. Sarah, 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 come on. Sarah couldn't. I mean, my God, she just, there's just no way. But God says, be fruitful. And God picked out in the Bible women that couldn't, people that couldn't, and blessed them, and they became fruitful because of God. 
And it's so powerful that a little old virgin named Mary said, I can't be fruitful. I'm not even with a man. And the Lord and the Holy Ghost said, yes, you can be fruitful because I'm going to come upon you. I'm going to come on you, and just because I come on you, you're going to be fruitful. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, are you with me? God can make you fruitful, and you don't even have the stuff that you need to be fruitful. God makes up the difference. My God shall supply. Amen. Oh, this we're shouting about somewhere along the line. I mean, I mean, you know, you don't have to even have the tools. You know, how do you walk, how do you walk up to a Jordan River, take your coat off, hit the coat, and the thing rolls back? You're fruitful. How many of you know that, that hitting the water with a coat does not make it roll back, but you don't, you don't need a dam when you got an anointing? Come on. <laughs> well, let's see here. We're going to have to build a dam. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to cut that water source off. We better go find us some. Maybe, maybe we can get us some guys to cut down. It's going to take us a good six months to cross this Jordan. No, no, we're just going to take our coat off and we're going to smite the water and it's going to roll back. I mean, that's just crazy. Anybody know this stuff is crazy and it needs to produce some crazy Christians. Huh? This Bible, we're not letting it be fruitful and make of us what the Bible is. Is anybody out there? Amen. The God told Jeremiah to knock a hole in your kitchen wall. I can just see Tina doing this. <laughs> and he says, get your pots and pans out of there. Get that big old number 14 skillet out of there. And then back out. And he goes in there, knocks a hole in the wall, picks up all of his skillets, all his pots and pans, and backs out. And everybody's watching him do it and says, thus saith the Lord. Just like I'm backing out of this kitchen, God's backing out of this country. That's the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that's the Bible. Yeah. And our problem is we got so much disobedience that we're scared to be obedient. Yeah. Right. We're worried about how it's going to look. Yeah. We're worried about what it is. And when you read this Bible, there's some crazy, crazy acts of obedience. But what happens is you're fruitful. Amen. Everybody say, I want to be fruitful. All right, you'll know them by the fruit. Are you with me now? Stay with me now. 716. 716. I'm already. Hallelujah. You shall know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. A corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down, cast into the fire, for by your fruit you shall know them. Amen. Is that right? Amen. By their fruit. Is this the first thing that God blessed us with? Is this the first thing out of the mouth of God when he declared us blessed? He said, be fruitful. Say it with me. Be fruitful. Because we're known by our fruit. Let's go to Matthew, I mean John chapter 15, verse 1. How many of y'all out there say amen? Remember, fruits are results. If you have the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace. How many of you, how many of you have been wondering where all the love is? How many know that that's where we're trying to get at? And then there's joy. How many know that's where we need to get back to? The church has got joy. Yeah. Because joy is unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. Uh, peace, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, self-control, patience, faithfulness. That these fruit, these, this, this, these results are in our life. Be fruitful. Say it with me. Be fruitful. The more fruitful I am, the more I'm moving down into this dominion. Dominion. I mean, y'all love me. Now, can I tell you that Adam and Eve were not fruitful in the garden? And God said, be fruitful, and God saw them that they weren't doing any of that. They didn't have a kid to left, and they got out of the garden. The devil knew he could get them. He wouldn't have been able to talk to them if they were over there trying to be fruitful. Thank you for your enthusiasm. The devil cannot mess with a believer when they're trying 
and working on being fruitful. Because you don't have time to listen to him when you're trying to produce results. Say this with me. I don't have time for that. That's redeeming the time. Amen. Say it with me. I don't have time. For that. I don't have time to get discouraged. Come on, talk with me. I don't have time to get discouraged. I don't have time to quit. I don't have time to give up. Come on, try it with me. I don't have time to go up. I don't have time to be angry. I don't have time to fall apart. I'm redeeming the time to be fruitful. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a glory praise. Come on. One crazy event. Three girls were found. Three girls. You saw it on the news. Three girls were found. They all lived within two to three miles, and all of their parents thought that they were dead and gone, out of the picture. Dead and gone. And three men had captured these three girls, and they looked for them. And they looked, and there, all of them were within two miles of their home. Captured, locked in, locked up, and they got, they got out today. Amen. How many know God's good? But if you're not careful, you will let that event mark the whole rest of your life. And you won't be fruitful. You'll be too afraid to produce results. You'll live in your past. Quit living in your past and become fruitful for your future. Are y'all with me now? John 15. Y'all getting anything out of this? Hallelujah. John chapter 15, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. I am the vine. Whoa! How many believe Jesus is the vine? Oh my God, this changes our whole idea about Jesus. If he's the vine, there's got to be some fruit on it. He's the shepherd, so there's got to be sheep. He's the light, so we're called children of the light. (laughs) Come on. He's the father of spirits, so we've got to be born again in our spirits where we're born again. Amen. Amen. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Jesus is the vine, and God is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes it away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. I want you to see that there's the word fruit, and then there's more fruit, and now we're going to find much fruit. Fruit is where you're going to get to the 30-fold. More fruit is where you're going to get to the 60-fold. Much fruit is when you're going to return a 100-fold return harvest. This is the 30, 60, 100-fold results. When you start producing results in your Christian experience, every seed you sow will bring forth 30 times what you sow. How many of y'all appreciate me right now? It's going to affect my life so much. Hallelujah. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. So I've got to let the Lord, once I start bearing results, come and cut back the places in my life that are not bearing any fruit. Amen. Right. <coughs> oh, I don't want to go there. You've got to go there if you want to get to the more fruit. Amen. Have you ever had the Lord just kind of cut you back some stuff? Yeah. Have you ever had the Lord just kind of get a hold of your tongue and then no, 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 no. get a hold of what you're hearing? You can't listen to that anymore. Get a hold of what you're saying, and you can't say that anymore. Get a hold of what you're thinking, and you can't think that no more. Get a hold of where you're going. That is him cutting back. That's him cutting back the branch, the place that in your life that doesn't produce any results for the glory of God. And then they're going to want to tell me that now we got churches even in Abilene that at 12, 15, we get to all sit down and drink a beer together. That ain't cutting back any fruit, baby. That's opening up the door for more dead stuff to take place. I, can't, I just can't figure this out. So we're going, to kid, we're going to send the kids outside. We're going to send Hillary outside. We're going to send Hayden outside so that Tina can sit down with me and have a beer and the kids are outside playing and knowing that Mama's inside having a beer with the preacher.
That's going on here in your city right now. Anybody want to just give God a kind of crazy praise right here? Have me with me. The whole goal of the church is to help you bring forth more fruit this year than you did last year. Results. Say it with me. Results. Say it with me. Results. That in the middle of your kids are in hell on earth, you're bringing forth fruit. That your family's looking crazy, but you're bringing forth fruit. That you're producing when nobody else is producing around you. Because you let the Lord cut back the places on your life that they can influence, that they can mess with you with, that they can stop you and make you give up, give in, and give out. No, I'm going to be productive and God's going to cut me back where I'm not. And it's not going to hurt me. It's going to better be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have y'all getting anything out of this? More fruit, more fruit. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. How does he do that? Verse 3, now you're clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. The word of God does it. The word of God is a sharp two-edged sword. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you is the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. I cannot bear these results by myself. I wish I could, but I can't. It's impossible. Except it abide in the vine, live in the vine. No more can you except you live in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Hang on. I am the vine, you are the branch. He that abides in me and I in, in him, the same bringeth forth, here's that better word, much fruit. So I've got fruit, more fruit. I go from fruit to more fruit when God cuts me back. I go from more fruit to much fruit, the greater I learn to abide and stay and dwell in the presence of God. Simple, simple. That's all it is to it. All there is to it. How can I explain it any better than that? All right, let's just get down to it. Let's see, let's see, if, let's see if I'm smart enough to do it. Well, I've got to ask the help of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know I'm just too dumb to do it by myself. So here's what I do. I may have to turn something off. I may have to gather my family around me. Williams, oh, no, you're kidding me. And we stop a little bit of something and just add one more minute that week to just abiding in the presence of God. Amen. Because abiding is a time It's a dwelling. Why don't you just stay at home tonight? Can you imagine a husband trying to say that to his wife? Why don't you just stay home tonight? No. Or vice versa. Come on. How many know that some people just can't stay at home? They just can't stay in school. They just can't stay in a situation. When you can't stay where you're supposed to stay, when you're supposed to be staying there, it's the enemy. You listen to me, young people. You listen to me, parents. You listen to me. When you can't stay where you're supposed to be staying, when it's time to stay there, it's the enemy trying to work something into your life that in through life you will not be able to stay. He will move you at his will. And you'll end up marrying somebody that can't stay at home. There are probably people in this room you can talk to that they married somebody that can't stay with them. Everything about God is an abiding relationship. It is something that He wants you to live in me, move in me, have your being in me. He never wants you to leave home, prodigal son. If you do, he's standing on the porch ready to receive you back safe and sound. But he would rather you stay at home and kill the fatted calf anytime you get ready, throw a party anytime you get ready, have a celebration anytime you get ready. Because that's what the older brother got ticked at. He said, you never have a party for me. And I was here all the time. He said, everything I got yours. You could have a party anytime you want to have a party. Let's just have a party. Come on. Let's just have a party. Let's say it together. Let's just have a party. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Y'all getting anything out of this anywhere else? Are you with me now? I've got, I'm getting, I'm going to be fruitful. Everybody say, be fruitful. How many believe you can be fruitful? Amen. You can be fruitful. Fruitful. You can produce results. Your mind can be full of good fruit. Your mouth can be full. A man eats good by the words of his mouth. You can fill your mouth with good things. You can fill your mind with good things. You can be, a, you can be working in hell, but still fill your mind with good things. 
You can be living in hell but still fill your mind with good things. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you have learned in Bible study that you've got to say amen at the right time or maybe people around you think you are saying amen at the wrong time? Uh, <laughs> amen. I wonder why Matt's laughing so loud over there, Jody. What do you think? <laughs> How many love me anyhow? Say amen. Here we go, here we go. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, verse 5 again, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, is withered. Men gather them. Circle the word, men gather them. And cast them into the fire and they are burned. Who gathers them? Men. When you, when you don't produce results, even people can throw you into a fiery situation. The way people are can burn your life up. Let me know I'm telling you the truth. But if you, if you have fruit to eat on from your abiding in God, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. You've got something to eat on that keeps you going. How many believe you've got something to eat on? Because the Bible says it's a curse for you to have fruit in your vineyard and not eat some of it. How I many of y'all love me? Say amen. amen. Look, look, at, look in verse number 16. You have not chosen me. How I many y'all believe this? Huh? Amen. There were two little boys that got called into the pastor's office. And when they got into, they'd been acting up in Sunday school. They'd been throwing spit wads in the back of Sister Short's hair. <laughs> and their mama was getting ready to beat them. And the pastor called him in and he just looked right at him and he said to him, where is the Lord? And one boy looked at the other boy and said, we better get out of here. The Lord's missing and they're going to blame us for it. <laughs> what did Forrest Gump say? Have you found Jesus? Didn't know he was lost. <laughs> Am y'all with me? Come out of there, come out of there. How many of y'all love me? Say amen. Look at this. Look at this. You have not chosen me. You know, we say, have you found the Lord? How many of you ever heard that? Yeah. And he ain't lost. Right. Has the Lord found you? Yeah, listen. You have not chosen me. This ought to make you feel good. But I have chosen you. Yeah. Now look out here. And ordained you. Yeah. And ordained you for what? That you should go and bring forth fruit. Listen, listen now to me. I'm going to show you how to get all your prayers answered. How many want all your prayers to be answered? Amen. Do you know that fruit is so important that it, that it is connected to your prayer life? Yes. Yes. Are you with me now? Yeah. That you will go and bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, I will give it to you. Fruit and prayer answering go together. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. How many you with me now? Say amen. amen. How many you love it? If a, man, if a man does not love his wife as Christ loves the church, the Bible says his prayers will be hindered. That's, right. That's, right. That's a warning to all men. And when a man doesn't do it, when a man doesn't love his wife, all of a sudden his prayers can start having a hindrance. Are you with me? The Bible tells us about praying, and we've never been using this results, bringing forth fruit is a connection to our prayers, our, our fruit remaining, that whatsoever we ask, Amen. we shall receive. Amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Fruit is that powerful. Amen. Fruit is that important to God. Fruit is that important to God. Yeah. Are you with me now? I'm determined to bring forth fruit no matter what would happen in my body. I've told my wife before, I said, if, if anything tries to happen to me, you load me up in the back of the truck, get me up here, lay me on the ground, I'm going to preach on a Sunday morning to everybody. Because I'm going to bring forth results. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. Everybody say fruit. fruit. See, that's what I've got to do. I, if I'm going to walk in the blessing, the blessing is to be fruitful. 
Say it with me. The blessing is to be fruitful. Say it again. The blessing is to be fruitful. Mm. Stay with me now because I'm going to take you on the journey of the plow. I'm going to take you on the journey of the ground and the seed. Everything God does, he does with the seed. And that seed is, is inside the seed is what the fruit is going to be. Come on. If I plant an apple seed, I'm not going to get oranges. I'm going to get apples. The whole kingdom of God is based upon a seed. Do you listen? Are you hearing me? The seed was put inside Mary. Then the seed grew and became a man. And the seed was put in the ground. And that seed became a family. When God wanted a family, he sowed a seed. He sowed his son and reaped a family. Are you with me? I do not cry one tear over any of my family that have not yet come to the kingdom of God because this is my family. And this is God keeping me in the family until all my family comes in. And if I'm not careful, I'll look at all of that and won't celebrate this. Somebody help me out somewhere along the line. That's what I got to do. And when your children are just messing up so bad you don't know what to do, then look at Chloe. Then look at these babies. Then look at these young ladies. Then look at these young kids over here. Then look over there at Hillary getting as tall as her mama. Look around here and celebrate these babies. Celebrate these young people. Am I right? Am I telling the truth? You know that I am, don't you? Okay. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. Are y'all there? Philippians. Ooh, I'm not there. If you're there, say amen. amen. Well, then you read it. Philippians 1.11. Ready, set, go. Being filled with fruit. Woo! Well, we know we're filled with the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be filled with fruit. Because that's what we're going to eat on. That's what we're going to give out. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I wasn't planning on this, but how many are going to help me out anyway? Because you know it's going to take me forever to get through with this stuff. I, I, you know, it's like the old guys say, Pastor, your message is you don't have to be eternal to be immortal. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many fruit of the Spirit are there? All right. I saw a book the other day, the 27 fruit of the Spirit. Okay. Oh, my God. I mean, with me. These three I grow for myself. Me, myself, and I. Huh? I mean, oh, these three are for me. How do I get them? How do I get this fruit? All fruit comes from a seed. Gifts are given, fruits are grown. Always remember that when you read the difference between fruit and gifts in the Bible. That's the two things that God works, fruits and gifts. Have you with me? Say amen. When God does it, he does it with fruit and gifts. Are y'all, do y'all agree with that? So what's the difference? Gifts are given, not earned. Fruits are grown because it was sown. Don't pray for patience. Sow it into yourself as a seed. So I grow love, joy, peace for myself. Why? Because I got to love my neighbor as myself. Even the Bible talks about a man with his wife. No man yet, ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. And it says that's what he should give to his wife. So I do it. Uh, all right. Love, joy, peace. What's the next one? Long suffering, gentleness, goodness. Well, are you with me? Those are for my wife, my friends, my family. Do you agree with that? Let me know my wife needs my gentleness. Have you ever been around an angry person in your family? That wasn't no fun. 
How many of you ever been around a person that just wasn't good? How many of y'all been around a person that didn't write very good on the board? <laughs> All right, meekness, right? Which is simply what? Humbleness. This isn't in my teaching. This is extra. Meekness, what else? Temperance. And faithfulness. How many are you with me? These I grow for God. Because I have to humble myself under the mighty hand of God. I need to stay in self-control so that God can control me. I can't let myself get out of control. God, won't, God doesn't make me get out of control. I make myself get out of control. How many of you will admit to me you've been out of control before? Yeah. The devil loved it. Yeah. And faithfulness, faithfulness is for God. Faithfulness. I believe it's still from the word pistos, P-I-S-T-O-S, which is faith. And really it is faith. It is a faithfulness that comes from faith. It's not faithfulness that just comes because I'm, I'm morally good. Right. How many you know a lot of morally good people, but that don't mean they're saved? Right. By grace, through faith. Yeah. I wish morally good people could go to heaven, but they don't get to go to heaven because you're morally good. You have to be cleansed yeah. by the blood of Jesus. How many of you appreciate that little yeah. deterrent there? Yeah. All right, y'all with me now? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Have we gone to Mark chapter 4, verse 20? No. Well, let's do it. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. Everything God does, he does with a seed. Do you agree with me? Yes. The seed is the word of God. That seed has to grow into results. Every seed, everything God calls a seed has to become a fruit. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Every seed has to become a fruit. Every, everything given has to be a gift, and that gift has to keep on giving. Y'all love me? We're going to get into the seed here in a little bit. Mark chapter 4, verse number 20. I want to be full of fruit. And these are they that are sown on good ground and hear the word of God and... There's my Sunday morning message, half of it. Receive it and bring forth fruit. I'm backing up what I said earlier. Some 60-fold, I mean some 30-fold, some 60, some 100. Is that what it says, meat, fine bread? These are they that on good ground hear the word. Hear the word. Say it with me. So when you hear it, you got to do what with it? All righty. How many of there are a lot of people that hear the word, but they don't receive it? Amen. Hear it? Receive it? I before E except after C. And then bring forth fruit. Right? All right, then what does it open the door to? 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. How many with me? Say amen. amen. It means that I'm bringing forth fruit amen. in that measure. Yes. Yes. When I'm bringing forth fruit in that measure, then it means the seeds that I sow in every area of life, even financially, start hitting 30, 60, and 100-fold. When I take the Word of God and produce results with it in these dimensions, how long has it been since you say, Lord, when I read these words, I receive it, and I'm going to start. Don't, you, don't, you can't start right here. Don't think you can skip 30 and 60. Huh? If i got to start at 30, you do too. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. Everybody's got to start where it starts. And how many of you know that most of the body of Christ hadn't even gotten to this one yet? Because a lot of us don't know diddly squat about what I've been sharing tonight. 
Nobody took the time to tell us this. Nobody took the time to tell us that fruit is results and all results have to come from a seed. How many of y'all with me? So if I hear the word, which the word is the, the seed is the word of God. Do you believe it? I believe it. It's so powerful that God can put it into a virgin and bring forth a child. Yes. It's so powerful it can break into a person's body and without the help of a man bring forth a child. Yes. It is so power packed that it is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. And if it could get in her womb, it can get into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and get down in your joints and down in your bones, leukemia victim. I kind of felt that stuff when I'm telling it to you. And then you begin to bring forth fruit and your results are 30-fold. Then you jump into 60-fold. Lord, I want to live in the 30-fold. Say it with me. Lord, I want to live in the 30-fold. What does that mean? If I go out there, Tom, have you ever planted a fruit tree, Tom? And when you went out there, you put a seed in the ground. All it really took was one, didn't it? And that one seed, after a while, in time, started producing a certain amount of plums or peaches or pears from one seed. If you continue to work with it and you fertilize it and urge it, eventually it will bring forth more. And then it will bring forth more. It will start growing and outdoing itself. And really, it's all still coming from that one seed. In fact, my kids can eat of it. My grandkids can eat of it. I'm dead and gone to heaven and somebody buys my house and they're still eating from it. And you can't find the seed because the seed now has turned into the fruit and you can take the fruit and eat it and then take a seed and put it in the ground and reproduce after its own kind. This is the principle of the whole kingdom of God. And this is how God operates completely on the law of seed to fruit and then giving. As long as the earth remains. I, I love this guy that's on TV. I love him, but he's, he's selling. He's, he's making lots of money selling to people all this food for the end of time. And it lasts for 20 years. And for $7,700 gift to the ministry, I'm going to send you 20 years of food because the day is coming that we will have no food. No, as long as the earth remains there will be seed time and harvest because the whole existence of the earth is on seed time and harvest. The whole existence of the kingdom of God is seed time and harvest because he made the world and made us as a little image of heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it... Just stay right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All, all righteousness is is a fruit. A shield and a fruit. Sow to yourself in righteousness. They that sow in tears reap in joy. If you drink your tears, you're going to cry them again. The Bible talks about David said, I drank my tears. I swam in them. You'll keep swimming in them. You've got to use them as seed and sow them to God. Every tear I'm crying, hallelujah, I'm going to cry as a seed sown to reap some joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. How? Because I sowed my tears. If I drink them, I'll cry them again. If I swim in them, I can drown because I'll get too tired to keep swimming in them. So I've got to sow them unto God. And then he'll bottle them up in heaven. Oh, this, this is worth coming to. Amen. Are y'all alive? Y'all, are y'all with me? Even when you die, your body will go into the ground like a seed. Yeah. It will lay there dormant. In man's eyes, if he took it out of the ground, it would be look like this and look like that. But to God, it's just a seed. Yeah. 
and he'll blow a trumpet and that seed will come out. It was sown in weakness and it is raised in righteousness. It's just a seed. This whole thing is the seed. This whole thing is the seed. What you have in your marriage right now is the seeds of the words that you've sown. Your harvest comes from seed. He is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of the harvest. Am I right about it, dog? Seed time and harvest. Are y'all getting anything in this? These are they that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth results, results, <laughs> results, Results, that's a new word. I gotta call I gotta call Webster. I'll be back. He's gonna say, You're an idiot. <laughs> Bring forth results. <laughs> I must have hung my tongue out on the line and now I can't fold it. Some thirty, sixty, a hundred. Some thirty, sixty, and a hundred. Say it with me. 30, 60, and a hundred. How many of you know that that hardly any of us in this building are thinking about 30, 60, and 100. We're thinking about just getting by. Yes. How many know I'm just telling the gospel truth right here? We're, we're people of faith. We go to a church that preaches believing or whatever we go, and yet we are struggling and surviving and trying to believe God. Yes. We're trying to when it says that if we get in this thing and live in and dwell in it, we'll get to the point to where that we will have 30 times, 60 times, and 100 times yes. of, of results. Yes. Amen. 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 Am, am, I, am I right about it right here? Yes. Come on, am I right about it? Yes. If I am, let's pray to live it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 5.1, and I got to stop here. I don't want to. I just, I just tell you straight up. I'm just now getting wound up. I'm just now... I'm just now I'm just now sweating and I'm wound up because I really wanted to get into some seed. I really wanted to get into some, some seed. This is called the parable of the vineyard. There's just a few parables in the Bible. How many know you've got to have a little bit of the Holy Spirit to just under even understand me? How many know there are parables in the Old, Old Testament? This is called the parable of the vineyard. I, did a, I got to teach a Bible college class at Southwestern called the Parables of the Old Testament. And this is one of the parables. Listen to it. Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. I'm going to sing a song about the vineyard of the Lord. Everything God does, he does it as a vineyard. He calls Israel a vine, a fig tree, a vine to produce. We are... He's the vine, we're the branch. I mean, everything we're associated with is productivity. Yeah. Results, fruit. Yeah. How many of y'all agree with that so far? Yeah. So he said, here it is. My well-beloved has a vineyard. Well-beloved in a very, what? A very fruitful hill. The Lord is so good that he doesn't put a vineyard in a non-fruitful place. It's a very fruitful hill. So he's telling me, that the Lord's going to put a vineyard and even the hill that he puts it on is fruitful. The very hill. Everybody say the hill. The hill. Did you get that? The hill is fruitful. Everybody say the hill is fruitful. So the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. The hill is fruitful. It's supposed to be. The hill is, so he puts a vineyard in a fruitful hill. Now let's look at what he does. Let's see what the Lord does. Look at what the Lord does. Say it with me. Look at what the Lord does. He fences, he fences it in. He puts a perimeter around it. He puts a hedge of protection around it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So anytime God wants to put a... a he wants, he wants it to bring forth. He wants it to do what it needs it to do. He fences it in. Because he wants to keep the stuff out that doesn't need to get in it. 
He gathers out the stones. <laughs> How many you with me? He gathers out the stones. That's why he said, I'm going to take all the stones out of your heart. I'm going to take all the stones out of your heart. Because when God sets up fruitfulness, he knows there cannot be any stones in that area. He's got to gather them out. Amen. How many you with me? Say amen. amen. Are you learning anything about the Lord? Amen. So he gathers out the stones. And then he builds a tower in the middle of it. What's the tower for? He puts a wine press in the tower. Yeah, right. He builds a tower. He puts in a barn. He puts in a place that we can take the fruit and we can turn it into something to eat and we can turn it into something to drink. Amen. Even this is what Jesus said about his blood. And, it, and when they took communion, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until I drink it with you. Yes. He calls his blood the fruit of the vine. And what did he say? I am the vine. And his blood is the fruit of the vine. Read it for yourself, Matthew 26. He said, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine with you. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. And after he said, drink ye all of it, then he said, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine again with you until we drink it together in the kingdom. Amen. How do you believe the blood of Jesus is the fruit of the vine? Yes. It is the complete results of everything Jesus is. Yes. Oh. I don't even think I'm going to be able to go to bed until after 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I just, I'm going to come from one house to the next house. I'll be at y'all's place about 4 a.m. I got to hurry. I'm finishing. He builds a tower in the middle of it. In the middle of it, makes a wine press. He looked that it should bring forth grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Read it on. He says, what more could I have done in my vineyard that I did not do? In other words, I want you to listen to me. God's going to do everything he can do for you to bring forth results. It's up to you that it's not wild, it's up to you that it's good. Yeah. Have you ever met a person that's got wild fruit? Yeah. Wild results. But you're going to bring forth fruit. Amen. How many love the Lord? Say amen. amen. You know, Jasmine's graduating from high school. How many are just like six ways proud of her? Yeah. Jasmine went through some things that she could have brought forth wild fruit. Yeah. Wild fruit. But how many of you know that, that she's bringing forth good fruit? Amen. When you've had things done to you, you can do wild things. When you've had people that hurt you, you can turn into wild fruit. That's what the devil wants. He wants wild results. God wants sweet results. Father, I give you praise and glory tonight that you're going to help me as I continue with this endeavor. Help me to get through before you come back. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I love you.